RCWR show with Lee Sanders is intended for a mature audience only. The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation, keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive. Covering the latest in wrestling and beyond since 2011. You're listening to the RCWR Show. Now, your host, live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., Lee Sanders. Hey, what is good? Kind people checking out all new the RCWR Show. Lee Sanders here for Monday night of May 24th. 2021 my god this month of may has been flying by ridiculously man ridiculously hope y'all had a fantastic weekend mine was fantastic i gotta tell you now that we have officially the start of the nba playoffs i definitely had enjoyed a lot of the games that we got from over the weekend some surprises that were in there honestly and just based on what i've seen thus far with that series oh god what's what's that one series with the lakers i'm trying to think who's the other team that they're playing right now you know everybody all the analysts kept saying oh it's over ad lebron james they got this they're back they're gonna be healthy it's lights out they're going all the way blah 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 and and i just couldn't help but say to myself nah man uh golden state warriors is who i was who i was um no 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 that was the play-in tournament no, the one I'm thinking about was the Phoenix Suns. That's that's the one I'm thinking about because game one was the other day, Sunday. And uh, I just couldn't help but say to myself, as long as I've been watching the NBA, no, nah, man, that's not how this goes. You have been out for a significant period of time. You got to get that repetition back. You got to find your good footing and, and all of that. And honestly, I believe that the deeper that LeBron and the Lakers can go into the playoffs, then yes, then we will definitely start to see that old LeBron James come back. I need consistency from AD. If Lakers even remotely have a shot, AD has to be consistent. And, you know, we we see so many people that are trying to make AD be the escape goat and and everything. And it's like, nah, man, this is the same Phoenix Suns about almost three weeks ago. He was able to do a 42-piece. He was able to do a 42-piece on this damn team. And for the way he came out, what, what, what did he have on Sunday? I mean, it was low numbers. I think he might have had about maybe, if he was lucky, maybe 15 points. That's not going to get the job done. Against the Phoenix Suns, that's definitely not going to get the job done. So I, I got to see how game two goes, but I got to tell you what I'm saying of the Lakers so far. It, it's not off to an impressive start. I got to say, definitely not off to an impressive start. But I don't see at this point, just based on what I've been seeing of the Lakers, not from this particular series, but just off and on this season, I just don't see Lakers going to the NBA Finals. I'm not seeing that whatsoever. I I mean, it's still kind of up in the air for me right now, guys. It it really is still up in the air for me. I enjoyed the game that we got the other night that was between, oh, God, what was it? I think it was between the Knicks and the Hawks at MSG. Man, what a fantastic game that was. I mean, that was a straight-up nail biter man right down to the final 60 seconds of that game i mean the great good back and forth and everything i ain't never been so excited for a knicks game in my life and i actually was watching this with my girl and we were just amazed at how well the knicks were playing and i said to her i said man i said ain't seen the knicks this damn good not since the days of patrick ewan they went through a rough patch there for many many years so i think that hawks and Knicks series i think it's going to be a fantastic series my predictions i believe it's going to go to game six letting you guys know that right now i was so impressed with what i had solved that game one between Knicks and the hawks i actually had went on Ticketmaster. i was trying to see what was going on with tickets available for the upcoming games and all and sadly, I, I for some weird reason, I was under the impression I was going to be in New York 
next week because I was under the impression this was the final week of May. I don't know why, but I thought this was the final week of May. And, you know, we got one more week to go, actually. So I'm hoping that by the time I get done getting married and then I'm out on my honeymoon, because I'm actually going to be spending my honeymoon in New York. I, I mean, it was back and forth, back and forth with the missus. We couldn't quite figure out exactly where we wanted to go. Uh, one of the early, early contenders was Nevada. She wanted to go to Nevada, see some shows, uh, do a little bit of gambling. I wasn't so fond of the gambling and all that. And then the other thing I wasn't quite fond on was all of that traveling because that would be extra expenses for us. We'd have to hop on a plane and all that other stuff. So I, I really wasn't interested in doing any of that. And then uh, Connecticut was a runner up. We came very close to uh, going with a resort and casino up in Connecticut. But Connecticut, sadly, you know, the the way they we looked at that calendar for Connecticut, looked at their shows and all that ain't really nothing going on over there at, at that resort. I mean, they pretty much got this same comedian. I looked up some of his stuff online. He wasn't funny remotely whatsoever. And then they got drag queen performances. I don't know what the hell that's about. The Dave Matthews band actually was supposed to be there for a couple of nights. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm into the Dave Matthews band. Have been for years. Yeah, those shows got postponed. So it was, okay, so really there's no entertainment. So there's only but so much to do out in Connecticut. So it was kind of one of those, yeah, that's okay, we're good. So I think PA might have been a runner-up uh, as well. I think PA might have been a runner-up. Atlanta and Texas were runner-ups too, but they've been making the news in a negative light, so... The winner ended up being New York since everything's pretty much reopened uh, out there again. It's pretty much back to normal before the pandemic and all. So I said, let's do New York. You know, at least we can go out to different restaurants each night. Uh, plenty of stuff to do out there. I would imagine we could probably do some tours, uh, you know, go see the Statue of Liberty and all that. So New York, because we didn't get to do that uh, last time. And we both love New York. It's, it's just... We don't want to just go to New York and be cooped up in a hotel. I mean, if when you're in the heart of New York, you, know, you definitely want to take advantage of all the sights and sounds and all that. So I uh, tried to actually look up some Knicks tickets at MSG and everything. And I see, depending, I believe game, I can't remember which games it is that's actually going to be. Actually, if you bear with me a second, I can actually tell you what's going on. Because by the Hawks beating the Knicks, Hawks now have home court advantage. So if I remember it right, if I remember it right, I don't think, I think May 28th, yeah, May 28th for game three and game four, that's pretty much going to be at MSG. And then game five, if necessary, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be in Atlanta. And then game six, they're pretty much going back to MSG, it looks like. I, hopefully I, hopefully I'm, I'm saying this right. And then game seven, if necessary, that's going to be back in Atlanta. So, you know, I have to see how that how that pans out. But, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can get some tickets. It's kind of cool how, I don't know how many of you guys had actually done this recently. And it's kind of a good transition with regards to WWE. But how many of you guys have actually tried looking up tickets online at Ticketmaster for some live events that's going to be coming up? If you haven't done so, you'll find something that's really, really cool on the site and everything. So in my case, when I was looking up tickets for MSG, and I took a screenshot and I shared it on social media, there was this really cool little thing where they talked about COVID seats, basically. And I want to actually pull up the uh, tweet I'm talking about right now for you guys. I really haven't been tweeting that much, so bear with me a quick second here, and I can actually pull it up for you guys, and boom. It's dubbed Vaccinated Fan Ticket. And when you read the description of this, this is the new norm that we're in. I know some of you guys are going to kind of find this to be a little bit funny and all that, but this is the new norm 
that we're in right now. Check this out. Designated vaccinated seating areas with no social distancing and no masks required for adults while seated. Any guest who purchases tickets in a vaccinated section but is unable to provide proof of full vaccination will not be permitted access to the seat and their tickets will not be eligible for a refund. Children under the age of 16 will also be permitted to sit in a vaccinated section if they provide proof of a negative antigen COVID-19 test or a negative PCR COVID-19 test. So this is the new norm that we're in right now. And I think it's kind of a, a, a cool move on Ticketmaster and everybody else that's planning on following suit or is already conducting their business like this. I, I think it's a, a really cool move to do because it kind of matches up to what the CDC had said a couple of weeks ago as far as, hey, look, if you want to be able to take advantage of you know being amongst other people and not be so concerned about indoor outdoor activities you want to get fully vaccinated now you know obviously once you're fully vaccinated you know if you're going to go to an event like what i just described there at msg then you know what you're fully vaccinated you're probably okay you probably don't need to wear a mask but just as a precaution you, you probably rather just to have that extra layer of safety and all that, you probably might want to go on ahead and, and put on that mask and everything. But I think this is really cool uh, how these events are operating. And uh, I just like the fact that if you're not vaccinated, you can't show proof that you're vaccinated. You're essentially going to get turned away. Now, I can't help but wonder if you did the whole vaccination you took a photograph of your card. I can't help but wonder if an uh, image of your card on your phone, if that would be okay, because not everybody is going to be running around with that vaccination card when you really stop and think about it. Not everybody's going to be running around with that. So, you know, will a photograph of that be okay? Some people are talking about, and some people have actually done this. Some people have actually had their joints laminated. And I don't really know if laminated is a good idea there. Not not really sure if that's a good idea, but good transition in the WWE because something that we didn't get a chance to talk about because uh, pretty much what we haven't done a show for you guys, not since really last Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. So a lot of stuff has gone down since last we were on the air. And to those of you that have voted on the latest RCWR show poll, I put a poll up asking you guys, hey, programming notes, this is what's going on. This is what I'm thinking. What do you guys have to say? I need your help in structuring the shows for this week. And a lot of you guys have represented and you cast your votes. I'll get into those results later on and let you guys know exactly what the uh, plan is going to be for the uh, programming for this week and all. But last time we did a show was last Wednesday. So a lot of stuff has gone down that I'm actually reacting to for the very first time. Velveteen Dream, Patrick Clark being released from the WWE, but for the first time ever, openly, openly is addressing his accusers. He's also in depth tackling the allegations that's been floating in the air about him for a long, significant period of time. Uh, so we'll definitely dive into that later on in the show. Uh, we also got, again, kicking kicking us off, really, WWE. Again, didn't get a chance to talk about this last week. WWE is making the return to live events. They want the fans and, and, and all. And what did I tell you guys? I, you know, I know some of my friends and colleagues in the podcasting world, they definitely were pretty admin and vocal about it. Uh, as well but remember what i was saying off and on about wwe and live events now mines was not as very narrow as some of my friends and colleagues out there but i i was kind of specific i i basically said you know what i would suspect by the end of summer remember what i kept saying i said i would suspect by the end of summer so maybe july and i, I remember saying to you guys when is SummerSlam? Whenever SummerSlam is, maybe that's when WWE is possibly going to pull the trigger 
for doing live events. Otherwise, I said to you guys, if not by the end of the summer, I said potentially first quarter of 2022. So I was picturing definitely right around Royal Rumble time is maybe when WWE was going to start doing live events once again. But they went on ahead and they pretty much said, no, nah, we're going to go on ahead and, and we're going to start this July. So, I mean, look, I'm sure that WWE, and really ever since this whole pandemic first began, companies like WWE, the promotions like WWE were looking at what was going on, following the science, following the analytics, following the data, and trying to go about making the best educated guess, you know, try try to use the what all is at their disposal of, of resources to make the best possible decision. And this is how we got to this point. Look, doesn't matter if you don't really watch the news anymore, but if you were definitely one of those people that went out there and got vaccinated and you're a little bit curious, yeah, what's going on with that percentage of people that's getting vaccinated and all that? How How's that going? Right now, as it stands, now, of course, numbers change all the time, but this information is pretty much current as of from over the weekend, basically. You got about over 40% of Americans that are fully vaccinated. That means all the necessary COVID-19 vaccination shots they were supposed to get, they got them. Meanwhile, you have just tiny little bit over like 40.38 percent of people that at least got one one COVID-19 shot just one and of course you got that alarming 20 percent of folks that haven't done either of those so obviously when you hear data like that and you just hear those new updates by the week by the month of the many Americans that's getting those shots and things are now starting to loosen as far as the restrictions and all that. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm not that surprised that WWE is essentially following suit with Impact Wrestling, with MLW, um, ROH even. I'm not surprised that they're following suit and going, okay, we're going to start doing live events again. Check this out. Now, not as and AEW too. Got to make sure I, I show love to AEW because AEW definitely before WWE they had made there. And remember, we talked about all the dates where they're going to be doing live events on last week's show. Right now, right now, the way that it's looking, WWE have announced three events. You can get tickets for it right now. Friday, July sixteenth. That's going to be a Friday night edition of SmackDown. It's going to be in Houston, Texas. That weekend, Sunday, July 18th, Money in the Bank. It's going to be in Fort Worth, Texas. And then you got the Monday, July 19th edition of Monday Night Raw. That's going to be in Dallas, Texas. Now, WWE had made the announcement that there was going to be uh, a 20-date tour that was going to be coming up. And I'm a little bit curious. It's a 25-city, actually, 25-city tour. I said 20. It's actually a 25-city tour that they're going to be doing. And um, some of the other cities, I'm trying to see. Um, last I saw, nothing else was announced right now as far as the other stops. That should be coming up, you know, in, in, the, in the coming weeks. So nothing right now. I hope DC is on that list. If you ask me straight up, Lee, well, if WWE decides to bring the action to your respected neck of the woods, are you going to go? I'm fully vaccinated. My girl is now fully vaccinated. We actually talked about it earlier tonight. I said, look, I said, I don't know if WWE is going to be bringing the action to the DC metropolitan area in July, but are you down with actually going to an event? And she said, yeah, sure. You know, as long as we got our mask. Yeah, sure. I, I don't mind going. So we're we're definitely going to go to a WWE event. And, and probably most likely uh, what will happen is and see, that's where it gets a little bit tricky because we're talking Monday Night Raw. And my girl usually has to work early in the morning on Tuesday. So kind of kind of keeping that in mind, I, I wouldn't be that surprised. I think it just really depends 
on when WWE is bringing the action to our neck of the woods. You know, she might be able to get that day off or switch with somebody. But I, I think the worst possible scenario may be once I find out what the dates are for WWE coming out here, I'll most likely just book a hotel that's relatively close by the because um, they like coming to the Verizon Center. So it's, it's a great arena anyway. So I, I would imagine they're going to come there again. Um, and there's plenty of hotels actually uh, around that area. I most likely, after the show is over, would just go straight to the hotel and I'll, I'll, I might I can see myself doing a little post show for you guys after uh, after that event was done and everything. So you know, it, this is good news. I mean, if you're that wrestling fan, if you and your family have been fully vaccinated or partially vaccinated, you're just waiting until that time allowed so you can go get that next shot. I mean, this is great news to be hearing. So, I mean, we're almost there, guys and girls. We're almost there at that finish line. We just got to continue to stay the course and everything and continue the uh, the smart practices and social distancing and, and all of that good stuff. But I would imagine uh, many more other wrestling promotions are going to be following suit as well. WWE Raw tonight, uh, contrary to how some people may feel, for me personally, it had a couple of bright spots. But... I got to be real with you guys. I was most looking forward, honestly, no bullshit. And I was really, really disappointed. I was deeply looking forward to the series finale of Black Lightning tonight. And uh, it, it's so funny because we had got Philo TV a couple of weeks ago. Anybody that doesn't know what Philo TV is, Google or Bing it. But in a nutshell, it's very similar to Sling TV, YouTube TV, Hulu TV. So that should give you an idea. But um, I, uh, I had a, we got Philo TV a couple of weeks ago because we wanted to keep up with the A and E WWE biographies, most wanted treasure episodes. I was under the impression the CW network was on there. So, you know, long story short, earlier tonight, you know, me and my girl, you know, she's excited, but I'm really, really amped up. I'm excited because I was ready to switch the channel at 9 p.m. promptly so I could watch the finale of Black Lightning. And uh, sadly, I go on Philo. There's no CW network. I'm going, what the fuck? So I immediately just I'm like spending about 10 minutes trying to see where the hell uh, where the hell I can find the CW network. So I look up CW network on Hulu. I look it up on Sling. I look it up on FUBU TV. I'm not finding the network anywhere. And it's like, God damn. And so finally, I just said, who the fuck owns the CW network? And that was my last question. I'm like, who owns the CW network? I do my research and I'm going, well, shit. Well, this makes all the goddamn sense in the world. It's the fucking Sinclair Broadcasting Company. They're behind us. And anybody that knows a thing or two about the C, uh, the Sinclair Broadcasting people, they are knuckleheads. These are the same guys that are behind uh, Ring of Honor. And when you just think about all the cool things that's happening with your favorite wrestling promotion or you're seeing what's happening with other networks that you're able to access and everything, you just see how, man, it's available here, it's available there, it's available here, it's available there, it's available here, it's available there. And Sinclair Broadcasting, just as a whole, they're notorious for the least little amount of money that we got to put out there, the better, the better, because we really don't want to spend. So, I mean, these guys are essentially... It feels like at times they are 30 years behind of everybody else as far as digital media, the way in which we access our content and everything. And you would just think that in 2021, okay, CW, no prop. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cut a deal with these guys. We'll cut a deal with, but CW is strictly one of those deals where it's, unless it's analog, it's only going to be available through your respected cable satellite provider. You know, so it sucks. So I wasn't able to watch this series finale because my plan was watch the first hour of Monday Night Raw. Second hour, I'm watching the finale of Black Lightning. 
third hour, I'm pretty much fast forwarding through commercials, catching up on what all I missed during that second hour of Raw, get myself caught up in real time into that third hour, and then boom, I'm, I'm ready to go. But not the case at all. So sadly, I actually have to wait until the next day to watch the finale. So, you know, but I, I like representing in real time, man, showing my love and all that, especially after the bad news that we had got. Um, I think it actually broke out right before the weekend was out that apparently the Black Lightning spinoff series Painkiller that did not get picked up by the CW for the fall schedule. Repeat, it did not get picked up. So that really bummed the hell out of a lot of CW fans. But like I was telling the missus, I said, you know, um, I was probably one that was very vocal about it amongst friends, uh, family, and um, on social media. I, I said, look, I said, you follow the numbers for Black Lightning this season, and the numbers have not been banging. And look, I love what everything... I love everything that's been happening with the painkiller character, you know, Khalil and, and that guy that portrays uh pain phenomenal. He's a phenomenal actor. Uh, as I've said off and on, he reminds me a lot like uh, of a young Nelly uh, to, to a certain degree. He's got, he's got a young Nelly vibe thing uh, going on. Great looking face, great freaking physique and all that. And I looked at those numbers. I said, look, you know, when he pops up, it, it's great, but he's not moving the needle, sadly. And you go back and you look at many of those episodes from this fourth and final season of Black Lightning. He didn't move the needle. I, I mean, it was. It was sad. You know, the average was 0 0.32. That was your viewership for pretty much this whole season. And for me, what would have been a telling tale is, OK, well, let's see if brother can get you know, at least 1.0, you know, if he can get 1.0 million viewers, okay, yeah, he, he's probably got some hope, but the fact that he wasn't able to, you know, move the needle there, so right now, they're trying to see if they can pitch it to other networks, particularly, they're trying to see if they can hopefully uh, get the show on HBO Max, you know, if they're able to get the green light and have that show be on HBO Max, you know, we're, we're talking slightly a bigger budget and a whole bunch of other positive things that could come from out of that. So there's still whole black lightning fans. There's still hope. Um, but it put me in such a bad mood when I wasn't able to watch it. So I, I pretty much was just sitting there looking at raw tonight. I'm like, okay, well now I'm really expecting for them to pick up the action here tonight and, and make it worth my while that, you know, I'm not spending my time elsewhere, make me feel like it's okay. And I, I honestly didn't really feel that way with regards to Raw tonight. Look, the main event match for the women's championship between Natty, my girl Tamina, taking on Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler. Good little main event match. You know, that, that was good. A predictable finish, though. Writing was on the wall. You saw it as clear as day because Shayna Baszler taking the heart. Reginald has been interfering a bit too much to her liking right down to the point look stay backstage don't do anything don't come near anywhere near my matches if you do there's going to be some serious consequences right and so you you automatically knew that okay we know reginald is going to come out at some point here i i gotta tell you what i was kind of expecting honestly what i was kind of expecting i wasn't expecting a title change i definitely was not expecting a title change but I, I thought I thought that something was going to go down where maybe somehow by count out or DQ, Nia and Shayna were maybe going to win. Not, and not because of Reginald. And I, I, I just kind of figured to myself, maybe this would kind of put Shayna Baszler in a position, storyline-wise, where she's saying to Nia, you see exactly what I'm talking about? Look at what we're capable of doing on our own and focus without somebody like a Reginald there at ringside. Get your head into the game, sister. Let's go do this. I'm trying to make this work. Are you in? You fully in? What's going on with you? I need to know. Where are we going with this? You know, I thought maybe that was going to kind of be the continuing development there. I, I did not honestly expect it to go the way that it was going to go. By the way, by the way, you know, 
I hate to be a stickler for detail, but if we're going to for the second week in a row have Reggie know, oh my eyes, oh oh my god, oh oh lordy lordy, oh you know, if we're gonna go in that direction, it makes more sense in the world. Okay, let's try to make this come off as really cool and 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 as realistic as possible don't you think it would have made i don't know more sense to have regino rather than go up the ramp don't you think it would have made a little bit more sense to have regino just go off to the side and then right that would have made more sense and literally in the direction of where that fire was erupting from tonight that made more sense to do rather than just have him be in the middle of the ramp and, you know, oh, the fire, the fire. You know, I, I hate to be a stickler for detail. And you know what? It didn't help some of those camera shots that they showed on the replay. That didn't help. That did not help whatsoever. Uh, stickler for detail. I know some of you guys probably liked it. Me, I, it, it just rubbed me the wrong way personally. Um, so because of that little shenanigan, ultimately, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax losing this match. So they weren't able to get back the women's tag titles post-match. Shayna checking in on Reginald, asking him if he's okay and all that. Then says to him pretty much what she said earlier, how she was tired of him interfering in her matches. So as a result of this latest action, he's going to have a match one-on-one -on -one against Shayna Baszler next week. I'm not expecting for Shayna to totally wipe the floor with Reginald. I, I think at this point, I'm just kind of going with my guts. I should really be trusting my eyes. But my gut is telling me that next week, Shayna, Naya, this is pretty much going to be it. My gut is telling me that Nia Jax isn't going to particularly be a fan of how much physical ridicule and embarrassment Shayna is going to be putting Reginald through and just pretty much wants for, you know, just end this already. You know, this needs to be done. I can see some shit like that coming about from next week. But Shayna is not letting up. And Nia just gets so freaking hot-headed and everything over it. I can see her actually coming to the defense of Reginald here. So where exactly are we going with this is the main question. Is is this a particular point here where we're essentially turning Nia Jax into a face as a result? Is, is this potentially WWE's way of trying to, you know, turn Nia Jax into a sympathetic babyface figure? And Nia Jax, and she's always just continued to be solid as a heel we just continue to you know kind of elevate her a, a little bit and crank it up a bit on that heel factor and is that kind of what we're ultimately going to do here that's what my gut is telling me now if you're asking me what are my eyes telling me and my my eyes is a different story my eyes is kind of following the wwe breadcrumbs the typical wwe breadcrumbs and I'm kind of getting the impression that it, it, it could just be a, a case where, no, Shayna is just pretty much going to whoop that ass. I could see Regino maybe trying to talk Nia Jax into, hey, please, you got to help me. You know, can't we, can't we like, you know, get along? You know, is there some type of way we can have this match get called off? Blah, 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 blah. I, I could see Nia trying to smooth things over with Shayna, but to no avail and Regino, you know that's pretty much the fee he has to pay and, and get his ass whooped and this whole Reginald thing just continues to go on me personally when it first began and we were first introduced to the Reginald character over on Smackdown with Carmella and all that I didn't mind him I, I thought he was a breath of fresh air I thought he was pretty fucking solid and everything but I, I gotta tell you as of late these past several weeks I have not been enjoying What's been happening with him in this arc uh, with Nia and Shayna? And I, I think it's time to pretty much get out while the getting is still good. So we'll, we'll see. But be prepared. Be prepared. As much as I would. I'm hoping that the gut instinct. I'm hoping that kicks in more rather than 
I personally, at this point, I wouldn't mind seeing Nia and Shayna go at it coming up at Hell in a Cell. That's just me. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see what's going on with that. By the way, who's responsible for the pyro? We know it ain't Kane. <laughs> we know it ain't Kane, Glenn Jacobs. So who's responsible for the pyro? It, it would seem to me that potentially, maybe, just maybe, Alexa Bliss has something to do. So, you know, is it safe to say Alexa Bliss is eyeing these tag titles with her little buddy Lily? Could be, could be. I have to wait and see how that plays out. But that's just my two cents from a distance on that one. Moving right along, some other some other key points. Uh, you know, I enjoyed Lashley. I enjoyed Lashley tonight in, in the fine ladies that he had uh for this week uh he had a, a nice selection of of ladies a little bit of vanilla a little bit of the chocolate a little bit of the mocha mocha everything going good with chocolate varieties very very good uh, i was i was feeling i was feeling his uh his 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 lady selections tonight i, I was loving it um i find it amazing I find it amazing where we have a lack of storyline consistency here. So let me see if I got this straight. So Lashley, MVP, going on and on about ah Drew McIntyre. He he's had his opportunities. Blah blah blah. Time for him to get to the back of the line. Blah 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 blah. Yakety smack. And yet we got Kofi Kingston that comes out and pretty much says, hey. I'm the one that defeated Bobby Lashley last week. Drew McIntyre, hey, dude, I, I didn't need your help, by the way. I could have beaten him all by myself. Why you were injecting your nose in my business, I, I, I don't understand that. But your ass need to get into the back of the line because you've had opportunity after opportunity. So the way this pretty much gets solved is by Adam Pierce coming out. I'm just trying to make sure I understand this correctly. This gets solved by Adam Pierce coming out. Making a match between Kofi Kingston and Drew McIntyre, and the winner of that goes on to face Bobby Lashley for the championship at Hell in a Cell. And we've got Lashley and MVP saying that's a good idea. No, that's not a good idea. You know how bipolar that looks? You know how inconsistent that looks? If in storyline for several weeks we've got Lashley and MVP saying, dude, Drew, you've had so many opportunities. You've come up short. You've failed. You've choked. No matter what, <laughs> you, you, you failed. You haven't been able to get the job done. You're done getting opportunities. I don't understand why MVP and Lashley didn't say, no, no, we're, we're, we don't agree to that. As far as we're concerned, Drew McIntyre has had more than ample enough opportunities. It is now time for new blood. Either we get Kofi Kingston at Hell in a Cell or... No deal at all. My champion will just sit this pay-per-view out. That would have made all the sense in the world. And at least you're somewhat being consistent. I, I just find it interesting, these weird loopholes that we keep going around to somehow keep inserting Drew McIntyre into the mix. And, and at this point, I just kind of feel as though there needs to be a, a stipulation that is at, at stake here. So, Kofi... Drew, great match. I actually did enjoy that. That actually was a pretty solid matchup that they did tonight. Uh, we didn't get a decisive victor, however, as Lashley, you know, he he did interfere. It's kind of interesting the way they kind of had all of that come about. But there was ramifications for Lashley getting involved. Adam Pierce catching up with him later on in the night, telling him that match between Drew Kofi is going to happen on next week's Raw. And we're going to definitely have a decisive victor. And if Lashley or MVP interferes in any type of way. Well, they both are going to be suspended for 90 days. And Lashley is going to get a very severe fine as a result. So don't try to interfere in this match whatsoever. OK, so you hear that you go, OK, cool. But we should really be looking ahead here, especially since we're still a couple of weeks out from Hell in a Cell. I mean, look, me personally, guys, 
I would love it if we can get Kofi Kingston taken on Lashley. And I know some people, they want to go with the whole, oh, it's all about Kofi Mania. Kofi Mania too. Co Kofi Mania is going to be running wild, y'all. Kofi Mania is making a comeback. Like, no, I'm not seeing Kofi Mania coming back. You can forget about Kofi Mania. Look, it was a nice, good feel moment and everything. Yags me straight up. I think it should have been Lashley the first go round. I, I think it should have been Lashley, not Kofi. Good feel moment though, right? Really nice, good feel moment. But other than the fact of Kofi Kingston's skin color, what do you remember as a fan? What do you remember most about Kofi Kingston's run as WWE champion? And without looking up something online, if you're having a hard time pulling something out of your mind, that's okay. That's okay. That's not Kofi Kingston's fault. Talented, talented in-ring performer. That's not his fault. You can ultimately, the fact that you can't remember much about his title reign, you can ultimately put that on the shoulders of Vince McMahon and WWE. That's the straight up truth. So I, I, I don't believe that we're going in this direction of Kofi Mania 2. I, I don't see that happening. We got to look at the real picture here. It's going to be Drew McIntyre, Lashley, yet again, which brings me to the point I alluded to earlier. There needs to be a stipulation that gets put on this match between Lashley, McIntyre, and Hell in the Cell. And it's an easy, simple stipulation. Drew McIntyre, this is your final shot. This is your final opportunity. No if, ands, or buts about it. This is it for you. If you're not able to get the job done at Hell in a Cell, that's it, Drew. For as long as Lashley remains the WWE champion, you don't get no title shot. You've had enough opportunities. It's time for new challengers. It's time for new beginnings. It's time for new opponents. Drew, this is it for you. That needs to be the stipulation. You know, give fans a reason why they should feel so heavily invested and, and why, okay, wow, you know what? This could possibly go either way. This this maybe could go. And for Drew McIntyre, it would make all the sense in the world for Drew McIntyre to accept those conditions, but also has a stipulation of his own, which is, okay, if I'm going to agree to these terms, then there are terms that you have to agree to, which is no MVP, no T-Bar and Mace, nobody acting on your behalf. If anybody acts on your behalf during this Hell in a Cell match and they try to fight for your behalf, anybody whatsoever, you're automatically stripped of the title. It comes to me by default. I think when you have some serious stipulations like that that's on the table, at least the fans can then say, okay, you know what, this could potentially go either way here. You know, it really, it really, really could go either way. So far, we're kind of matching up. We got one half of the Hell in a Cell picture right because remember, I believe it was on last week's show, we talked about what could potentially be the Raw Hell in a Cell main event and what could potentially be the SmackDown Hell in a Cell main main event there I find it interesting though that Braun Strowman isn't part of this whole equation yet we got Braun Strowman doing the little vignette come get these hands when you come see me at a WWE live event coming to a city near you I, I think that was kind of cool you know what, what what tonight really felt like to me was we got two maybe three really good matches for you guys to watch tonight we're really just all about our WWE stars constantly reminding you they're going back live on the road. It, so, it, and largely in part, it felt like an infomercial that I was watching tonight. Contrary to how some of you guys may feel. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. So, but hopefully, you, you know, that's, um, you know, it's, it's interesting where we're going with this Hell in a Cell for the Raw side of things. I still feel, though, that in regards to SmackDown, WWE's in a really good position right there because you could either go Bianca Belair 
Bailey, Hell in a Cell. But, 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 if you were to go there, see, here's the thing. I'm just thinking from WWE's logic, because they've done this in the past. They have done something like a Hell in a Cell match, which you would think this is the big payoff. This is the finish for this feud. But then they go into the next pay-per-view and they come up with, and you're going, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why couldn't things just so, but they could, they could go in that direction. It's possible that Roman Reigns could be facing Cesaro in Hell in a Cell. It's possible, uh, where's Edge though? Where the fuck is Edge? Yeah, you know, I was looking him up the other day, uh, over the almost right before the weekend, actually. Edge not on the Raw roster on WWE's website. He's not on the Raw roster. He's not on the SmackDown roster. So he's basically a free agent. So he can pretty much pop up where he pleases. And this is despite the fact that he won the Royal Rumble and he picked the respective championship he was gunning for. Edge is a free agent. So I don't quite understand why, when it counts the most. Edge, you don't have to worry about Daniel Bryan anymore trying to interfere. And Edge, you can finally pop up and pretty much get that one-on-one match against Roman Reigns here. Interesting. Really interesting what's going on there. And then you got the unfinished bad blood there between Cesaro, Seth Rollins. So, I, I, you know, some people feel Rollins, Cesaro, maybe that could be a Helen. I I don't see that. I, I don't see the perfect world. I'd be right there with you guys, but just looking at the WWE logic, I don't see them, no. I, and I don't want to use the word waste. I, I think the better word to use is spending. I, I don't see WWE spending those respected resources for Cesaro and Rollins. I'm not seeing that. It, it feels like at this point it's either going to be Bailey, Bianca, Hell in a Cell match, or it's going to be Roman in a Hell in a Cell match against said opponent and i'm thinking probably cesaro so we'll see we'll see how that pans out uh cedric alexander taking on shelton benjamin my match of the night thoroughly enjoyed thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that one i love um just the cat calling trash talking that cedric prime alexander as i'm dubbing him that that he was spewing out there at my man shelton benjamin and all that uh tonight that was pretty good um their match though i i I enjoyed that i I enjoyed that those boys went at it for about would have been nice to see them go at it for about 15 minutes because those boys can tell a really damn uh good story you know they really can um but cedric alexander pulling in the upset over shelton benjamin and i love how shelton just really sold the fact of i want to get my hands on this guy i want to just strangle his freaking neck i want to I want to just, yeah, I want to kill this dude. Uh, I, I love how Shelton was just pretty much selling the hell uh, out of that. I, I, I still kind of feel, though, that we're so, so far away from a couple of weeks back of what I initially wanted to see happen for Shelton and, and, and Cedric. It, it's quite sad that they're at this point you know and it's like okay well where do we go 90 days from now where are we with these guys uh six months from now you know wh- wh- where exactly are we and that's where i'm most concerned but this new edge that i'm seeing from cedric alexander which was very underlining you know we we saw this while he was in the hurt business i'm loving that it's amped up uh even more Lo- i'm loving it and and it's keeping me intrigued right now, uh, what's going on. Solid matchup between Matt Riddle and Xavier Woods. That's another one I actually got to give a lot of props for tonight. Um, great fucking match. Matt Riddle picking up the W. Uh, Solid-ass matchup. Solid. I, this was, I got to say, I I, uh, I looked at this match and I just said, okay, well, you know, on paper, this should be good. But no, the boys actually went out there and... Uh, it, it it exceeded my expectations. It, it far exceeded my expectations. So I definitely got to give it up to them tonight. They they definitely. So like I said, you know, you had two, three really good matches um, that was here on Raw tonight. So I definitely got to give it up to them for that. Um, the AJ Styles taking on a broom joint. Yeah, 
this whatever um Humberto Carrillo Sheamus I've told you guys Sheamus has been my MVP for he was my MVP for the month of uh March and April the stuff going on with Humberto Carrillo I, I could care less I could care less and now we got Ricochet that's pretty much thrown into the mix and, and every I could care about that as well so that's just me guys now I'm not being a hater that's just me so seven matches total that we got for raw tonight and again I gotta give an honorable mention I'll give an honorable mention to the women's tag team titles only because Tamina otherwise I really wouldn't have cared about it but the matches of the night for me Definitely Matt Riddle, Xavier Woods, Sheldon Benjamin, Cedric Alexander. Uh, let's see. For what it was worth, Kofi Kingston, Drew McIntyre. I know Charlotte and Asuka, they did their thing tonight as well. Those girls went at it pretty damn long, too. They, they got about at least almost 25 minutes to tell a, a freaking story. It was a good match. It, you know, it, it was. Um somewhat similar to you know wasn't it like last week or, or the week before that we saw these two girls lock it up and all that so i mean but a good banger it was it was a good banger of a match i can't really i can't really fault it too much my whole thing is okay you know one minute we're going to oscar and and now it's coming back to charlotte and you know what what exactly are are, are we doing here because essentially we kind of had like a kind of weird what was going on because Rhea Ripley had a beat the clock challenge somebody that we hadn't seen in months but remember I pointed her out to you guys when she served as one of the human lumberjacks when um god I can't remember I can't remember the match now felt like it involved John Morrison maybe it was John Morrison and Damian Priest it was actually and there were human lumberjacks not the zombie lumberjacks and I remember talking about how Nikki Cross was one of those lumberjacks. And, you know, now just poof, just here she is this week. Uh, Nikki Cross doing this beat the clock challenge against Rhea Ripley. And I'll give WWE this much credit. At least they said, OK, look, most fans, they're already looking at this. They're automatically going with Rhea Ripley. So maybe we can kind of swerve the fans here and the fact that Rhea Ripley was just so overconfident uh that she essentially took her opponent and Nikki Cross for granted and everything you know it pretty much cost her okay I'm all right with that but for some fans to come out of this and think that oh this is a this is a, a new era this is a new direction for Nikki Cross oh she's getting a push oh oh she's this isn't the start of anything. This is not the start of anything. So let's not even hate the bust that bubble. Really, I do. This ain't going anywhere. Okay. Um, I guarantee to you, if we were to do a follow up on these two girls next week, that keep hope alive is going to get squashed real fucking quick. So let's 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 be for real about that. A um, couple of good spots though, but average average episode of Raw uh, for this week. I would have to say, no, not not really. wasn't bad. Just you know, had a, had a couple of couple of good matches here and there. But that's pretty much that was pretty much raw uh, for this week. By the way, I I gotta say I gotta give WWE a lot of credit for this and what they've been doing these past several weeks now. Something that I was kind of alluding to off and on for a couple of years, which is damn WWE Raw show more love to NXT. Both are on the USA Network. Why don't you do some little promo spots and setting up some of the action that's going to be happening from NXT for that respected week? So I love these little commercial buffers of what you're going to be seeing from NXT. Not so much as as the matches, but, you know, one week you get Karrion Cross talking about, you know, this upcoming rematch with Finn Balor. And then, you know, the next week you got 
Johnny Gargano and Bronson Reed saying a little something and all that. This week, we got the Million Dollar Man putting over the fact that he's going to be doing a Million Dollar Face-Off with Cameron Grimes in the middle of the ring on this week's NXT and all that. So I love all that stuff, all those elements. I love the fact that Raw is essentially now trying to toss that bone there to uh, to NXT. I, I like it. I, I like it. Keep it coming is what I have to say to WWE. This should have happened a long time ago, quite honestly, a long time ago. Um, and with regards to NXT, look, they got a nice loaded up card for this Tuesday. I don't want to talk too heavily on uh, on NXT, contrary to how some of you guys may feel and uh, some of the questions you may have about, you know, my thoughts about certain things that's going to be playing out on NXT. And I'm kind of being a little bit more reserved because I don't want to be too much all over the place tonight because we're literally, based on your uh, votes, we're literally coming back here Tuesday night. So on that note, let's get into the uh, programming notes here. I'll get this out in the way on the open right now before we go any further. Oh, before we go any further into the show here. So I asked you guys right as we were going into the weekend. What do you guys want for this week's um, programming as we're leading up to our season finale of the RCWR show? We we are going to be away for about two weeks after we do our season finale. But then, you know, we'll come back with a new season afterwards. But uh, I kept saying at least on six, maybe seven times, it was a tie on YouTube. Pays to visit YouTube, youtube.com forward slash the RCWR show. Go over to the communities tab. And I kept seeing ties ever since this poll was put up a few days ago. And uh, here were your options. Do a super show this Tuesday and a late night Friday show, 12 a.m. Eastern. Technically, that's actually a Saturday show. And basically what that means is what I was trying to tell you guys. You want me to come on after AEW Dynamite. And so that's, that was your first option. Second option, do one show for NWA and one show for NXT Tuesday. Air Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern. That Saturday show, for those of you curious, that was just strictly going to be covering all things AEW. Third option, just do NWA on Tuesday. Talk NXT and AEW on Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then the last option, no, after Monday's show, just relax yourself until the AEW Double or Nothing post show. Now, coming in at a tie, do one show for NWA and one show for NXT Tuesday airs Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 17%. That's tied with the other option at 17%. Just do NWA on Tuesday. Talk NXT and AEW on Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Coming in at second place, no, after Monday show, relax yourself until AEW double or nothing post show. That came in at 28%. Overwhelmingly, majority of you at 38%. Not by much, but still a majority. Do a super show this Tuesday. So that means we're going to combine NWA power into NXT fallout and uh you know maybe we could try to sprinkle in a couple other little tidbits of uh of news i'm sure we could definitely get into the NXT break ratings breakdown for last week's show i can definitely talk about what i think is going to happen with the ratings for this week's NXT and all that so um that's the winner that's the winner and then of course a friday show Basically a Saturday show at 12 a.m. Eastern. That I got to be honest with you guys. That Saturday show is going to be a little tricky. I'm hoping that we can honestly be in and out by 1 o'clock in the morning. That's the ultimate goal. I saw the analytics and I see that there's many of you that are actually around and you're usually on YouTube around that time frame. It looks like between 10 and to one in the morning there's a lot of you guys friday night going into saturday morning there's a lot of you guys that are around so the goal is to come on 
at midnight because remember dynamite this friday that's going to go from 10 p.m till midnight so the goal is to be on be a, be a, just an hour or just shy of an hour but pretty much be in and out we'll talk dynamite we'll preview double or nothing we'll go over dynamite predictions and all that and that's how we'll set it up thank you to the many of you guys that had cash your votes look out for more polls you you just never know uh, as long as you're following me throughout social media you're always going to know when i do have a poll up available asking you guys you know hey this is what i'm thinking you know this is what's up you know uh what do you guys think blah 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 so yeah so we got the season finale of the rcwr show so now that you guys kind of have a good idea how the programming is going to go uh for next week um at this point the season finale of the rcwr show is going to be going down on monday may 31st so mark that down on your calendar monday may 31st that's going to be the season finale um i will put a poll up i will put a poll up asking you guys if you want me to cover nwa's pay-per-view that respected weekend which is when our shadows fall it's going to be on fight tv that pay-per-view is going to be happening on if i remember correctly it's either on saturday june 5th or on sunday june 6th i can't remember which day but it's happening that respected weekend so there'll be a poll up i'll probably put that poll up this wednesday asking you guys look this is what's up so when you see that poll go live cast your vote and uh, whatever you guys decide, I can tell you this, even though that's basically my wedding honeymoon weekend, the miss has already said, because I basically showed her the analytics of how we've been doing with the NWA content and all that. She actually wants me to do a post show. She's a little, you know, eh, but she totally understands as far as the NWA coverage, how a lot of people don't have access to it like they used to. So I've seen it growing more and more. It's a lot of people that's been complaining about NWA and the fact that it's not free uh, anymore. That is basically behind a paywall. So that kind of rubs a lot of people the wrong way and everything. So she realizes that as far as voices such as mine that is out there talking about the NWA product is pretty much helping people stay connected to everything that's been going on. So uh, pretty much she's on board. So at this point, the ball is pretty much going to be in y'all's court. So it'll be simple. You know, you guys want the post show? Great. You want me to enjoy my honeymoon wed and wedding uh, or wedding and honeymoon and just worry about it, you know, when we come back afterwards from the break, then so be it. So FYI. By the way, you guys been enjoying the show so far, and I know you have been. Please do me a huge favor if you haven't done so already. Make sure you go out of your way and you hit that like you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you always know about upcoming new content that comes your way uh, on a regular basis. If, 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 Lee, if Finn Balor lost to Karrion Cross for the NXT Championship tomorrow night, he going back, he going back to main roster, challenge Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Are you making a statement or are you asking a question? Because if you're making a statement, I would say, hey, that's a bold prediction. That's, that's a bold thing that you're putting out there. Let's see what happens. If you're phrasing that as a question and you're asking me how would I feel about a scenario like that, I do not see that happening. I hate to burst that bubble. But I do not see that happening. Um, understand something. And in case you guys haven't been able to quite, you know, figure this out just yet. Karrion Cross is on the path to greatness. Karrion Cross, everything that you've been seeing that's been happening with him since he's been down in NXT thus far. Everything is happening for a particular reason. For a particular reason. Everything that you've been seeing that's been going on with him creatively. He's pretty much been getting the blessing of Triple H and crew. And he's been able to just fire it up 
on all cylinders. I'm trying not to put too much out there, but pretty much only the information that Carrion Cross will allow for there, you know, to be out there circulating because he's actually friends with, you know, some of my people that I know um, in the uh, podcasting world and all that. And um, he, he is definitely going to be on the main roster a lot sooner rather than later. And they have on that main roster, they got some significant big plans for Karrion Cross. So keeping that in mind right now, look, as far as Finn Balor, Karrion Cross too. Karrion Cross is going to be keeping that title. Whenever the next Raw draft or WWE draft is, that's probably when you can expect for Karrion Cross to get the call up to the main roster it's probably most likely when you can expect it so if you were to tell me that the w the next wwe draft isn't going to be happening until maybe fall you know so like what like september since wwe likes to do their whole season premieres um and we shouldn't be talking because we're getting ready to do a season finale so touche pussycat touche so um I could see at the earliest of him coming up to the main roster, I could see it going down uh, pretty much this fall. Or or I could see him just finishing things up and pretty much we go into first quarter of 2022 and basically Raw after WrestleMania, you know, maybe that's when you have some shit go down there, right? But look at what's going on with these WWE live events that's going to be coming up and everything. Just just a bold prediction I want to be putting out there. Remember how disappointed majority of us fans were when we looked at the Raw after Mania. We looked at the SmackDown after Mania even. And all of those shows, all of their after Raw editions, uh, after, correction, after Mania editions, all of it was very lackluster. We were looking for the returns. We were looking for the big surprises. We were looking for the shockers. And we didn't get any of that. Um, I honestly feel that WWE has been just at this point saving all of that ammo. Going into their return to live events. Live pay-per-view events. SummerSlam. All of those things. So for those of you. Where's the Becky Lynch's? Where's this? Where's that? All of that is going to be for the live events and for the pay-per-views. So I, I would not be surprised if uh, if at this point, um, yeah, not to kind of go around, you got me going in circles. But you guys get the point. So hopefully that answers that question. i uh, see what else you guys are talking about. Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, da, 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 da. yeah, AEW Dark Elevation. Um, I I don't watch it. I'm I'm sorry. I love you guys. I love you guys tremendously. Unless you are a Patreon member and you you know you say to me, Lee, I, I'd appreciate it if you could talk more about AEW Dark. I'm not watching AEW Dark. I'm not watching AEW Elevation. Um, it, it's so funny because I sat down the other day actually and um you know sometimes me and my girl will we'll have just these nice interesting side conversations about how some of my friends in the podcasting world are doing and all that and eventually you know we talk about okay well what am i doing and um just the amount of hours that's out there for content i mean we're talking about two hours Two hours plus for AEW Dark. Two hours, maybe two hours plus for Elevation. We're talking Dynamite. Then we're going to get a new show, AEW Rampage. I'll watch it just for curiosity. But, you know, and that's probably going to be, what, an hour based on what they had said of the press releases and all that. That's going to be about an hour. So, uh, two, four, six, so seven hours right there. WWE Raw, that's three hours, so you're already up to 10. NXT, 12. 
SmackDown uh, 14, Impact 15, MLW 16, ROH 17. Uh, who, who am I forgetting that's in there? Um, heaven forbid there's a pay-per-view. Then it depends on who's doing a pay-per-view. So, I mean, we're, we're talking, oh, uh, don't forget about the WWE original program. So, I mean, all that alone in a week, you're, you're damn near close to 30 hours of wrestling content. I don't know about you guys personally, but I, I can only, but so much. That's why I love this time of the year when it comes to the NBA playoffs, because I can, contrary to how some people may feel, for some people, maybe the NBA doesn't apply to them. They don't care for the NBA or whatever. But for me, it's that mental decompression. You know, it's that mental break that I need from, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be honest with you guys. I have gotten a lot more and more into watching non-wrestling related stuff than the wrestling stuff. These days, I'm watching old episodes of Starsky and Hutch really love that show. I just now got to the season two opener where they uh, Starsky and Hutch, they're out in Las Vegas, Nevada. They're they're helping now some guy with, with a case because there's this what he believes to be a, serious, you know, unless it's something monumental. Do you feel where I'm coming from? Unless it's something monumental that like, nah, man, you you got to watch this because X, Y, Z, you, you got to watch this. Now, I always show love to Elevation and Dark and, and that other stuff for because I know there are those of you that actually do care about that type of stuff. And for some of you guys, you may actually want to know, you know, what's the card for Elevation? What's going on now? Good segue. Elevation for this week, Matt Hardy taking on Fuego del Sol. Pinto El Zero Miedo taking on Mike Seidel. Nyla Rose faced Robin Renegade. J.D. Drake went head-to-head -head with Rocky Romero. Ren Narita faced Royce Isaacs. Thunder Rosa went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ashley D. Amboise. Maybe it's Amboise. QT Marshall faced Robo. Scorpio Sky against Allen Five Angels. Ethan Page faced Alex Reynolds. Layla Gray took on Abaddon. Lee Johnson went up against Daniel Garcia. And Taya Conti took on Queen Animada. Now I gotta tell you, of these matches that I just talked about, and this is what I mean. There are actually some names on here that no, you know what? I actually want to see uh some of these cats. Uh for example, for example, Nyla Rose, because I, I don't really get to see her enough on Dynamite. I actually want to see her match against this Robin Renegade chick. Thunder Rosa was in action. I love Thunder Rosa. Uh, I will actually watch just for Thunder Rosa. I'm a big fan of Abaddon. Definitely want to see Abaddon. I need more Abaddon on Dynamite, to be honest with you. Uh, Tay Conti. Got a, got a soft spot for Tay Conti. I actually want to see Tay Conti. So for me, I can definitely see myself fast-forwarding through a, a lot of this stuff just to watch, uh, just to watch the names that I pointed out that I want to check out, but unless there was something significant, oh, you got to watch this particular match, you know, it comes highly recommended or whatever, then I'm just going to stick to the script like I plan on doing. So, yeah, it's each its own. But when you really kind of take a step back and think about it, you either got to be just that, you either got to be just that fanatic, have a lot of free time on your hands, you feel where I'm coming from? Um, it's easy for people to say, you know, oh, well, but I always try to tell people when it comes to the podcast and game, you, you got to have patience, research, 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 and you fucking, you, you kind of got to, you kind of have to have to a certain degree, 
almost a slight screw loose to cover what you're covering, but find that nice balance between normalcy, you know, living your life and giving yourself that, that breathing room you need. And you understand? So yeah, it can be tricky. Keith Lee, Keith Lee had posted a message thanking fans for their support as the rumors about his WWE status. It just continues to grow and grow and grow. Mia Yim had to jump out there, soon to be wife of Keith Lee. She had to jump out there and uh, say to fans, yo, please be patient. Let everything be because, you know, I don't know how it started, but uh, apparently a rumor was started up that he was released by the WWE. And um, Mia Yim pretty much had had squashed that, you know, and it, it's sad that it's kind of gotten to that point. You know, what did I tell you guys a couple of weeks ago? I, I told you guys that with regards to, and I know you guys, you know, you guys that make your rounds, you're reading the dirt sheets or you're checking out different podcasts or whatever. I know some of you guys, you, you like to try to dive into some of those salacious uh, gossips, the, the rumors and all that. And I don't really like focusing on, on stuff like that. Um, I mean, if I were to really be that dedicated to covering rumors and then all of that juicy little gossip, yeah, you know, would that get me more attraction? Would that get me more? Yeah, yeah, it definitely would. But I, I don't want to, I don't want to go down that path. I would rather just stay with the facts and, you know, deal with it as it is. And for me, I don't know what's going on with this young brother. I, I don't. I seriously don't know what's going on with him. Um, I don't know if health related or something's happened in his family and he is just respectfully taking some time away so he can tend to those things. But I'm like this personally, whatever that brother is going through right now, the best thing that we can do as fans, especially if we are fans of his work, the best thing that we can do for him, his family, his loved ones is give them their respected space allow them to do what they need to do and if there's anything that keith lee feels that needs to be directly shared with his fans then that'll be at his discretion on his own time and not on somebody else's schedule you feel me so that's the best thing that we can do right now you know, if you are a Keith Lee fan and, and you're just anticipating when you're going to be able to see him again on your TV, live event, or, or, or in person, or, or, or what have you, just best thing you could do is hit him up on social media. Hey, brother, sending you nothing but positive energy. Want nothing but the very best for you. You know, hope, hope you're hanging in there. That's the best thing that you can do. That's the best thing that you can do. You know, it, it's quite sad seeing all these dirt sheets. Some of these podcasters, these vloggers, these bloggers that want to try to put a negative spin on what all is going on with Keith Lee and everything uh, and, and other shit. They're just throwing fucking shit on the wall, just trying to see uh, what sticks, what sticks. That's what it's all about for them, trying to see what sticks. And it's quite sad. It's quite sad. And um, it, it's downright fucking, you know. I've learned in all the years that I have been podcasting and I and I've been doing this now since 2011. I've done my own interviews with folks and everything. You know, if there's one thing I've I've learned about being involved in 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 covering the industry and being a person of the media, if there's one thing that I've learned that I'm happy to say I don't practice is you got a lot of people that claim they're in the media that honestly guess 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 that's all they do is just guess ah what would make a good article for today well uh keith lee is 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 yet to be on wwe tv yet he hasn't even had any dark matches yet so uh well we just had the wwe releases come about and okay well you know what uh, some of the cryptic tweets he's been putting out there. Uh, okay, we'll just say that uh, according to our sources, Keith Lee has been released by WWE. And then, you know, hey, if it's wrong, then, you, you know, hey, 
we got our clickbait. We we got our traffic for our site. We were able to get people to engage on our content and, and the monetization of this. And, and that made people go down this rabbit hole of checking this out and this and this and this. I don't believe in doing that type of shit. I, I don't. I don't. You know, I'll tell you here it's straight from the fucking source. Just fucking just chill. Uh one other thing I wanna I wanna share with you guys. It's kinda interesting that her name uh popped up. Impact Wrestling slash TNA alumni Raka Khan. I wanna share this news with you guys. Her trial date has been delayed yet again. The trial for Trencha Biggers also known as Raka Khan, um, charges of interference with child custody. Her case has been uh, delayed to the fall, the trial for her. It, it's been delayed until the fall. PW Insider is reporting that the uh, court, the district court in El Paso, Texas, they've delayed the case once again. Originally, it was supposed to begin May 21st of this year. However, it got pushed back uh, once more to September 24th of this year. And for those of you that need a little bit of a refresher, she was indicted on charges of interference with child custody and aggravated kidnapping to facilitate back August of 2019. Get this. I don't know if any of you guys were aware of this, but she was put on a most wanted fugitives list for El Paso marinate on that she was put on a most wanted fugitives list for El Paso after failing to appear in court and was arraigned in December of that year interference with child custody basically involves taking or keeping a child when you know that doing so is violating a court order or a judgment and that pretty much that, that's a jail felony and it's punishable uh for that respective region it looks like you know it varies of course state to state city to city uh but it's punishable by up to two years in prison so that's what's going on with her and you know i i, I find it interesting because i know off and on over the years she made headlines because she had shared some of her negative experiences and being in a relationship with Kurt Angle and everything. And, you know, there were claims that uh, that she put out there. And as I always like to, and, and it's really a good transition into Velveteen Dream. So stay with me here because because it really is a good transition here. You know. She made uh, accusations. She she's made claims uh, against Kurt Angle that honestly, to this very day, Kurt Angle has never really definitively, greatly in depth, really squashed. Kurt Angle has admitted to a, a lot of things uh, as a human being that. You know, he he did that was pretty fucked up. He was in a, a really bad, dark place. And look, I'm not defending Kurt Angle whatsoever. I'm just saying in his own words, he definitely was in a really dark place or beginning to be in a really dark place right before he left the WWE. And if there was ever a time to really just kind of pump the brakes, take a step back, recharge the batteries a bit, focus on personal health well-being he didn't do that and pretty much went right into tna and you all pretty much know the rest of that so he definitely had some significant demons that was playing about and while he was in that relationship with raka khan trisha biggers they essentially kind of heightened and brought out the worst in each other so um, I know that she has said numerous times over the years that you know oh you know uh, he did this to me uh, he did that to me and you know blah this blah that and you know I, I've mentioned this before on the show 
but I, I want to make sure that I double down on, on this again. I actually, many years back, I actually reached out to Trent Shaw Biggers to give her a platform um, where she didn't have to worry about somebody twisting her own words, using them uh, against her. Um, back then, had my own respected team of uh, audio transcribers that would, you know, transcribe my interviews, and I would pretty much go back in, red marker, figure out what all needed to be edited and all that before I would send it off to the wrestling websites for reporting news and everything. And I, uh, I reached out to her some years back, and anybody that is, uh, is doubting this, I got no problem showing you the, uh, the screenshot, but I had reached out to her uh, some years back. And uh, I said the following to her when she was bringing up all this stuff. This goes back to 2017. This is what I said, and I quote. Hey, now, Lee Sanders here, producer and host of the RCWR show with Lee Sanders. A variety entertainment show that's heavy into covering wrestling along with conducting great interviews. Quick question for you. I understand the tweets you put out about Kurt Angle from when you dated him back in 2019 now keep in mind that sometime in 2017 she was making her rounds saying some stuff about Kurt Angle I don't know if this was maybe around that time when Kurt Angle was about to go into the Hall of uh, Hall of Fame or, or he was back as the Raw GM I, my mind's a little murky right now I would actually have to check the respective timeline to see exactly what was going on with Kurt Angle during that time period I understand the tweets you put out about Kurt Angle from when you dated him back in 2009. Not choosing sides, but based on what Kurt has said over the years, he's admitted, Dixie Carter and others admitted, he was not in a good place before leaving WWE and while he was in TNA. It really comes off that the man has done his very best to turn his life around. My question to you is why come off harboring over what was past from almost 10 years ago when it's obvious he's trying to move on and in a better direction. I have been burned by ex-girlfriends in the past that did a serious number on me and as much as it hurts I eventually had to move on. What's past is past. What do you say to those who feel you are smearing his name now almost 10 years later out of spite, out of jealousy. She did not reply. She did not reply. Now, you can hate me. You don't have to agree with a lot of things that I say on this show. Y'all are educated people. Y'all are, are obviously able to come to your own conclusions and... Yeah, I mean, that's what makes our country so great, right? You got your opinion, I got mine. Sometimes we have a meeting of the minds, and we can pretty much. But even you would have to admit, yeah, you you know what? If I was in a relationship and this shit had went down, you know, almost 10 years ago, and, you know, yeah, there does come a, a point in time where, you know, I, I got to pick myself up. I got to move on and I got to go on with my life. And, and I really did mean what I said there about, hey, you know, I, I've been burned by ex-girlfriends before. And, you know, you know, one ex-girlfriend, not to be long winded, but one ex-girlfriend that I can remember. Just to double down on the point that I'm making, I remember when I was in my early 20s, I remember when I was maybe 22, maybe 23 there was a girl that uh, I was head over heels for. Man, I moved heaven and earth uh, for that girl. Every time, and I had a really sweet work schedule. I used to, basically, I would work, basically, I would work Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And I would do 12-hour shifts each of those times. So you do the math. I'm basically doing... 36 hours or so 36 hours and I'm getting paid every other week, basically, you know, so 64. Hours, I mean, so, you know, and my pay rate was really good. 
I was getting damn good money. So after I would be done with work Tuesday morning, because I would do graveyard shifts, after I would get done with work that Tuesday morning, I pretty much would hop on a Greyhound. And I used to travel out. I was going from D.C. to Fredericksburg, Virginia to, uh, you know, I would get a room. I would get a room because it was like, man, once you got out to Fredericksburg, Virginia, you would think, okay, well, from here, it's easy to get to our house. No, you basically had to be driving for about 50, 55 minutes to get to her home in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So what I used to do, I used to take a Greyhound after I got off work and I would go, um, I'd go to Fredericksburg and I would go get a hotel for a couple of days. And she would normally, you know, meet me up at the hotel and everything. We would hang out all cool kinds of shit. You know, we were good. I was so blind. Turns out she had a drug problem, a significant drug problem. And um, I should have known all the signs were there. Love is blindness. And uh, she did a serious number. She did a serious number um, on me, man. And I, I just remember, yeah, you know, never again, blah, 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 blah. And eventually, I, I don't know what the fuck happened, but eventually, somehow I ended up giving her a second chance. And that second go round, Jesus, I had got burned out of so much money from her. I remember I had saved up a, a nice little bit of coin and I was trying to um, get my own place. And I remember at one point I said to her, well, you know what? At this point, I, uh, I'm i thinking about, you know, maybe getting a place down there since apartments and all that is pretty cheap down there. I think I might go on ahead and do that. And um, she said, oh, well, you know, maybe this go round, we can try again. And I'm like. You sure about that? Like, you really want it? She's like, yeah. And so she said, look, leave it up to me. I'll go ahead and I'll find, I'll find, um, you know, I'll find us some good housing. You know, there's some really good stuff out here for what you're trying to pay. I can actually find us a house. I said, okay, all right, cool. Long story short, I got burned out of a couple of hundred dollars when it was all said and done. Got burned out of a couple of hundred dollars and uh, I was fuming. I was fucking fuming, man. I mean, could you just imagine, like, if I had just everything that had negatively happened involved in that, that ex? Could you just imagine being in that position, harboring that, and just years upon years upon years later? Even after that person no longer conducts themselves in that fashion, they're a completely different person now. Whether they found Christ, they saw the error of their ways and they changed it. They're a completely different person now. And maybe that was brought on by kids, blah, this, blah, that. I ask you guys, when is it enough? When do we say, well, that's past. We, we, we got to leave that alone, right? And what I was, my interpretation, you kind of gathered it here from what I had, you know, asked of her. And uh, and I know she read it because I was able to see the the sent status and so I and, and scene status. So I, I know she saw the message. But, you know, what, what do you say when you get a question like that and you have, you know, before you point the finger at somebody. And that's how our society is, sadly, in, in America, we are so quick to be high and mighty. We are so quick to scrutinize somebody for their lifestyle, whether it be their choice of who they have as friends, uh, who they associate themselves with, their party affiliation, their sexual orientation, fill in the blanks. We try to make ourselves be these uh, authoritative figures on what's right, what's wrong, and, and all of this. And at the same time, we don't even all that pointing that we're doing at the same time, we don't look at our own selves in the mirror and say, well, wait a minute, who am I to judge? Who am I to scrutinize? I got my own fucking problems. So who am I? And when it comes to making the type of allegations and claims like what she made, we as a society, we want to latch on. That's what we do best because 
our society, we are very sympathetic towards individuals that we feel are, are victims. Uh, maybe there is some type of a deep affection that we have for that individual. And when we hear something has potentially gone down with them, we want to be so quick to come to their defense and when really we should just let all the evidence play out itself. And, okay, example, Velveteen Dream. So Velveteen Dream, as, as part of the releases that had came about from WWE uh, last week, you know, we pretty much had covered most of the releases, but I think, I think the last release that kicked in um, like the day after we got done with our show, Velveteen Dream was added to the list. So Velveteen Dream, and look, as far as any other new names and all that, if there's anything that I had missed from when we did the show last Wednesday, I'll definitely come back this Tuesday and we'll, we'll talk about some of those names here. But let's just focus on Velveteen Dream for right now. So Velveteen Dream, real name, Patrick Clark, released from WWE last week. I can't say I didn't see it coming. Right? Can't say that. Not surprised by this move. If anything, if I were to be a little bit... Mm, how come this didn't happen sooner? Because I was expecting this sooner. Understand, there's a big difference between expecting and wanting. I didn't want for this to happen sooner. I just, following everything that was going on... I was expecting this move to happen a lot sooner. Told you guys off and on over the years how much of a big fan I am of Velveteen Dream, Patrick Clark. I mean, phenomenal talent. Phenomenal fucking talent. What he does in the ring, God, like a black Shawn Michaels to a certain degree. And to hear about how he pretty much came up with the Velveteen Dream character being heavily influenced by the late Prince. Of all people, he, he was inspired by Prince. Didn't know a goddamn thing about Prince. But the more engulfed he became in researching all things Prince, learning more about the artist. The more infatuated he became and, and the more dedicated he became in, in trying to incorporate certain mannerisms, style, all of that into his Velveteen, Velveteen Dream gimmick and everything. So my hat's off to him for what he was able to do with that character and everything and really blending the lines there of what's Velveteen Dream and what exactly is Patrick Clark. Okay, where do they differ and, and where are they exactly similar? Where are they exactly the same? You know, he's right here from the D.C. metropolitan area. He's right here. Um, I always, that extra, I mean, who does it? When you hear about that wrestler that's from your respected neck of the woods and you hear about some of the territories that they used to frequent in your respected neck of the woods and you go, all right, somebody from our from our own backyard, they, they fucking made it. You know, A, you know, you get that extra satisfaction and everything. Like, I get so much, I stick my chest out. You know, and I'm, I'm so proud and I have the biggest smile on my face when I get to say, yeah, you know, Dave Batista, he's from right here. He's from right here. And some of the stories that I've been able to share with people that either still know Dave Batista personally to this very day uh, or used to know him and, and just hear all kinds of cool stories and shit, you know, badass, fucking badass. So Patrick Clark. Definitely, I'm looking at him, and, and, and I'm just, I remember Tough Enough. Who doesn't remember Tough Enough? We looked at him early on, and we said, he's got some serious personality. Oh, he's very fucking arrogant. He's cocky as fuck. Right up WWE's alley. He would do just well. Yeah, probably got to humble him just a little bit, but he's definitely of that cloth, that same cloth that WWE needs. Definitely see some really good things happening for him. You all remember way back when he was my winner. He was my guy that I, I felt was going to win the whole damn thing. And whether it was politics or, or, or whatever, somehow he got fucked out of that show. I still remember 
this very day, I still remember how, if I'm not mis mistaken, I don't have to rely on you guys to correct me, how Miz, if I recall it right, Miz, I don't know why I'm picturing Jericho for some reason, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Miz. And you could overhear what, what Miz was saying to Patrick. You know, look, you made all your contacts. You know, you, you spent all these weeks here. Utilize them. Do what you got to do. If you really want this, you're going to be back here. You're going to be back here. You, you will be here. So you didn't get in this way. You do everything that I'm telling you to do. You'll be here through another way. And Patrick Clark, sure enough, he followed that advice. He did everything, you know, that he was supposed to do. Maryland Championship Pro Wrestling largely uh, helped him in part fine-tune his shit and everything. And, and the rest is pretty much history, uh, as they would say. These allegations that came uh, against him, the sending of explicit photos to an underage girl, and him denying it i mean let's really rewind this back we, we got to take this back to 2020 and there's no reason to be long-winded about this but remember how all of this pretty much had got started there was a reddit user that claimed to have responded to dream saying that his instagram dms were open and that reportedly he sent an explicit photo to this one individual that was under the age of 18. He sent explicit photos to them, asking them what school did they go to. Makes matters even worse, there was some audio tape or whatever of Velveteen Dream and, and the infamous, what school do you go to? But yet to be any confirmation that, yes, officially, this is his voice. One of those rarest times that he broke character to address these damaging allegations. He said, be assured I did not communicate inappropriately with anyone. A private photo of mine was shared without my consent or knowledge, and I'm working with a third party to look into this matter. That's all that he said, and, and he pretty much just went on about his business. But then... Matters get a, a, a little bit worse here because then uh, you have God, you, you, you have one accuser, same accuser who noted she was 17, her friends were 15 and 16. And he pretty much was having these interactions uh, with these girls and everything. Despite all of this stuff that went down, he eventually still returned to the NXT brand. Remember, he had that awesome feud with Adam Cole and the Undisputed Era, everything pretty much leading up to him, dressing up, Negan inspired, having that parking lot brawl and all that. You all, you all remember that? You all remember that? And the last that we had pretty much heard uh, about all of this was that supposedly you know, the, the victim involved or whatever was going to be working with the local authorities and, and, you know, conveniently, we never really did hear anything else in regards to that. It, it pretty much was just dead silent. Not choosing sides here. I'm just giving you the facts. Dead silent from both sides. So now you got this shit that's going down with his release. How many of you guys know of WWE artist Rob Schamberger? A couple of years back, had Rob Schamberger on the show. Great conversation. We were talking all things art, WWE. Um, he made a bold prediction about Undertaker, which version of the Undertaker we would be seeing. He was off by a little bit, but he, he fucking called it. He fucking called it. Um, Check it out on the audio archives. It was a really good conversation. He went on record and without mentioning Velveteen Dream's name, he passionately had talked about um, how Velveteen Dream, you know, apparently has a, a really shitty 
personality and all that. Essentially calling him the most unprofessional person. Yeah, that's what he actually had said. Here's here's what he said directly. Without saying anything further, he was the single most unprofessional person I've encountered in this business. I hope this is the wake up call he needs to start doing the emotional work to become a better person. All told. You ain't got to be no idiot to figure out exactly who he was talking about. And if anybody knows a thing or two uh, about Rob Schamberger, you've checked out enough of his interviews. He is not one of those. Understand something. This is a guy that is essentially on WWE's payroll. All of that nice, pretty little artwork that you stay seeing of WWE superstars and all of that. Um, typically, he has had a hand and making that artwork he is their residential artist you go on wwe shop you stay seeing some type of artwork from rob schamberger hell of an artist his style might not be for everybody that's the truth his style might not be for everybody but he has his favorites reason why i'm going on and on about rob schamberger is if you've made your rounds checking him out through enough interviews you know schamberger is not the type of person that tries to throw anybody under the bus, let alone a WWE talent. He is very pro and, and very, you know, if it gets to a point where he's kind of feeling a little bit uncomfortable about, he, he will figure out a way to kind of wrap up the interview or whatever. He's, he's one of those type of guys. So the fact that he jumped out there and said what he said about Patrick Clark's personality, Think about this, boys and girls. We had a front row seat for this during Tough Enough. So we had an idea uh, of what this guy was. It would seem, though, by all accounts, it just magnified. It got worse and worse. Now, maybe you can make the argument that, oh, well, there were so many people that probably got in his ear. You're the, you're the toast. You're the toast of the town. You're the shit. You're the man. You're the bomb, man. Bump these haters. You're you're a black Shawn Michaels. You're the LeBron James of NXT. Hell, you should be the LeBron James of the WWE. You understand what I'm saying? When you have enough people that all get in your head, you got too many too many people that some of those people got their own respected agendas too. Some of those people don't have the very best intent for you at heart. And you're letting them influence you greatly and all that. I wouldn't be surprised if he let the wrong people get in his ear. What did I tell you guys? What do I normally tell you guys when I see a wrestler who I'm quite fond of? I always say, hey, as long as they can keep their head clear, stay around the right type of people, they should be fucking solid. I most recently said that about Karrion Cross when I first found out uh, the news that he was coming to WWE. All right. So, Velveteen Dream, again, I'm not surprised by his release. I just, if anything, what takes me back, I'm surprised that it, it didn't come a lot sooner, but here we are. And I look at it like this, to follow up on the story I talked about earlier, we gotta be careful as a society when we are making allegations and we can't definitively back it up. Now, I don't want to lose you guys. What do I mean by that exactly? Well, when you look at the stuff that's going on with Velveteen Dream, oh, supposedly explicit photos, you know, blah this, blah that. Uh, my account was hacked. Uh, okay, well, there's a couple of ways you can look at this. Let's talk about that. <sighs> okay. So, number one, if your account was in fact hacked, we've all been there. We know what it's like to have an account hacked. Well, at some point, we're going to have some type of screenshot, some type of video recording of our conversation with tech support, with, with whoever, to, yeah, so the account was compromised, here's what had happened, blah, 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 blah. Right? So think, think that. Have that in the back of your head. 
Oh, this photo was sent with, without my consent. Well, okay, so it is you. So you're not denying that. So it is you. Okay, well, Jesus fucking Christ of Latter-day Saints, how many dick and balls pics are you sending to people that you can't definitively go, this person had sent it. I know it was them. They sent it. Let me fucking hit them up. Here's my third point. If you know in your heart that something definitively is not true, the hell with rocking the boat of your current employer, the hell with, you know, whatever else might come your way or whatever. If you know that something is not true, you're not just going to release one statement and just be done with it. You're going to passionately at great length, maybe a couple of times, but you're pretty much going to shoot it down every single opportunity you get, which brings me to this point. So he finally breaks his silence on this, this, uh, this uh, release. First of all, the release, and he addresses his accusers at the same time. Now, I want to read to you guys this statement that he put out there, and I don't want to take anything. I don't want to take anything out of context from what he had said here. So check this out. The allegations from April 20 of 2020 have effectively derailed any upward momentum I had professionally and has ultimately resulted in my termination with WWE. My name is Patrick Clark, not the Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream is a character that I have spent years developing and trying to bring to life. The success of the Dream character relied heavily on kayfabe, my ability to blur Patrick Clark from tough enough with this over-the-top personality. The character was conceptualized the day Prince passed, April 21st, 2016. I knew nothing about him at that time, but my thinking was that I could use my interpretation of Prince to create an on-screen personality vastly different from who I am as a person. Q Velveteen Dream, a sexually ambiguous, gender-fluid, self-absorbed Devo. And as I learned more about Prince, I began to tame certain aspects of the character, aspects that I deemed way too over the top and inconsistent with who Prince was as a performer. Now, before I unpack, I will say I've enjoyed the many stories I've been able to share on camera, and I'm grateful to the many people who trusted me with their safety and wellness. Thank you to any and everybody who enjoyed and allowed me to be my character, whether you paid a ticket or walked up on me in Walmart. My goal was to provide you with the same escape that I was offered when I first started watching. My job was to play a character and to help advance storylines and drama for the fans who care to tune in. I take any job I have seriously, which is why I've remained silent about these allegations. Something that you should never do, people. Quick sidebar. Never. If something isn't true, you know it passionately, you've got proof on your side, I am quick to tell you, as long as you have all the facts on your side, defend your position. Defend your stance. To me, addressing rumors would be working against an already compromised ability to sell a character I've invested so heavily. After I had been accused, I was given the opportunity to be in a storyline that lasted a few months, and I worked in a few segments unrelated to the story arc, but now I feel comfortable in this position to share with you the details of my accusations. Here we go. Meat and potatoes. Night of April 20th, from my verified Instagram account, I posted a story to my followers letting them know that my DMs had been open. I received a few different messages ranging from support, to heckling, and some inquiring about how to get started in pro wrestling. I responded to a few, but not all. And of the few I responded to, one account accused me of solicitation. The account belonged to a 17-year-old aspiring wrestler, Jacob, before he deleted it. In the conversation, Jacob shared his interest in working as a wrestler one day and asked what steps would be required. I messaged a short list of things he should consider if he was serious, physique and promo to start. 
But Zeke, because as an independent contractor, no one is going to make you train and eat in a way that creates the aesthetic of a believable pro wrestler. And promo, because our job is to sell drama. And you can't rely on someone flipping channels to stop to watch a choreographed fight. You're more likely to grab their attention looking into a camera with a strong and impassioned 30-second monologue. I also inquired about which schools he was closest to in relation to wrestling training, his weight, and his height. Jacob explained how anxious he felt messaging me and asked me to verify that it was really me. Why does he need to do that? Anybody that has an Instagram account, quick sidebar, very easy to get yourself verified when you're a celebrity or of the celebrity status like Double Team Dream was at that point. If you don't see the blue check mark, same thing you see on Twitter, you pretty much get the same thing on Instagram, you see the same thing on Facebook, hell, YouTube has them now then it's safe to say you're not talking to the real deal. Let's keep going. I did find it strange because I have a blue check mark, but as a lifelong fan, I remember meeting greets and the days I would message wrestlers hoping to be seen, so I chalked it up to innocence and sent a voice message in my Velveteen Dream voice as to keep kayfabe. The full voice message has me asking Jacob about his height, weight, where he trained, and what school he attended, which Jacob answered back with a voice message, and I continued to answer his questions until I politely wrapped up the conversation. Remember this part so far, okay? Just, if there's one thing I want you to home in on and kind of just have in the back of your mind, locked in for a little bit, home in on that particular thing right there, the voice messages. Keep that in the back of your mind. We're going to come back to that in a hot second. April 21st, I woke up to notifications and tags of created screenshots and videos of a conversation that I didn't have with Jacob. I immediately contacted WWE's talent relations and social media departments as to begin an investigation. Even after the investigation, WWE released a statement maintaining my innocence. The part that hurt for me was having a personal picture that I've used in my personal life on apps being used to label me as a predator. All right, now let's home in on that one. Let's home in on that for a second. The part that hurt for me was having a personal picture that I've used in my personal life on apps being used to label me as predator. Now home in on that. Personal picture, personal life on apps. Okay, so, like many of us adults, one time or another, we have certain needs, right? We've got certain sexual needs. We want to try to find a partner or whatever. And for some of us, we use dating apps. We go on dating sites. And, okay, so let's not try to bullshit people here, especially us men, right? This is real talk here. We have been known to have a personal picture or two and pretty much have it on standby. You know, once we get to a certain point with that acquaintance that we hope to become very, very familiar with, wink, wink, let's keep rocking and rolling. I am in no way of the word a predator. This is the first and only time I've been accused of any solicitation to anyone. Until I was accused of grooming by Joshua Fuller. Like Jacob, I know Josh. I met Josh after my stint on Tough Enough 2015 at a meet and greet, and we developed a friendship through a mutual trainer at GXW. Josh shared to Twitter screenshots of the first time we communicated through text 2016 an autographed picture from when we met, and an extremely contradictory story. Josh alleged that I made him feel uncomfortable, but contradicts himself twice by saying I was never sexual toward him. For those willing to research Josh's tweet accusing me, Josh's messages are in blue and mine 
in gray. Josh claimed that he was a 16-year-old high school graduate and that he takes yearly trips with his friend to Orlando, Florida. I've doubted what he told me, yet I kept my replies diplomatic and professional. I got to pause right here. I got to pause right here. So we're rewinding this back through 2016. Patrick Clark is 25 years old. Uh, in 2021, what he's uh, probably going on 26 now. Uh, so let's rewind that back. Uh, 2020, 19, 18, 17, 16. Okay, so 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. 20 year old, 16 year old. I don't care if it's of the same gender. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm not gonna communicate with. No, I'm 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 just not. I'm I'm just not going to do that. Meet and greet is one thing. You're out in the open and, and all of that shit. Uh, but this whole text message thing and all that, yeah, not not doing that. Not doing that whatsoever. Maybe not until I befriend the parents and, you know, I build a rapport with the parents. And, hey, your kid is very serious about, uh, you know, training, trying to get into the business and all that. You know, if you're comfortable, you know, maybe from a big brother type of standpoint, I could maybe kind of, but then the parents are in the picture, they're involved, but just, uh, yeah, no, no, as it stands right now, no, let's keep rocking and rolling. I doubted what he told me, yet I kept my replies diplomatic and professional. The reality of the situation is that I was very helpful and respectful to Josh. Josh lives with his grandparents in rural Southern Maryland. Josh got a concussion, 2017, and against my advice, insisted on wrestling. My worry came, my worry came, and for those of you that's joining us live, particularly on YouTube, there's a rewind option. Rewind it back. We're talking Patrick Clark, Velveteen Dream. Put a full statement out earlier today. Josh got a concussion, 2017, and against my advice, insisted on wrestling. My worry came from Josh severely injuring himself, specifically his brain. I suggested he take time off from training to see a doctor. He declined because he believed he could work through the concussion, and I cut all communication with him in 2018 because I did not want to be partially responsible had he worsened his injury. So to have him accuse me of predatory behavior because I chose not to help was spiteful. Here's my only problem with, with all of this. Okay, you cut him off now, but, you know, really, okay, he lived with his grandparents. You know, the one thing that's missing from this is, okay, well, if he lived with his grandparents, okay, so essentially these were his caregivers. These were essentially his parents. These were his guardians, essentially. I'm missing the part in here where Patrick Clark had some type of a personal relationship with the grandparents and he pretty much had their blessing as far as acting as a big brother to this Josh Cad and all of this other shit. I'm, I'm missing that part. So, so far, I'm not calling bullshit, but very questionable. You, you, you feel where I'm coming from? Very, very questionable. Some of these decisions uh, that were made. All right, so he cut off all communication. Great. Josh and Jacob are two of many people that I've helped. Yet, these are the only two who have found me to be malicious and predatory in how I go about helping others. What wasn't shared at the time. Josh Fuller reached out to Jacob over social media before Josh put out his own accusation. When this came out, Josh Fuller temporarily deleted his Twitter account, Josh Fuller PW, which is important because in all the social media confusion, Josh Fuller is the only person who suggested that an investigation had not been done and that had not been and that he had not been contacted. Jacob deleted his social media after he was outed for being a member of an anti-black group chat. There is a public forum 
WWE LPSG stars where people are bullying and selling and sharing explicit photos and videos of multiple wrestlers and no one has done anything to have the site taken down. All in all, this entire experience defamed my character and ultimately accomplished what it sought out to do, that was to see me released. My hope is that over time, people can put two and two together and realize that all the allegations surrounding me were baseless and untrue from the jump. I felt strongly about not needing to defend myself on social media for a while now, but I understand the audience I work for and those who know me deserve clarity. I'm thankful for the opportunities afforded to me and the memories I have as a receipt. God has always had me and he always will. Dream is officially over, but Patrick Clark lives to fight another day. So that's his entire statement. Just marinate on that for a couple of clicks. Look, I can remember being that age, particularly, and and being so naive, right? Being so naive in the people I decided to associate myself with. But you know what? There's only but so much being naive you can have to, are you just stupid? You know, it, it, you're that blind. Like, like really, you, you, you didn't see that coming. You really were going to put yourself in this position. And you did put yourself in this position. And you really didn't think anything bad was going to come from this. Very, 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 very weird. It, it, it's very, very weird. Because... Let's deal with it from this standpoint. Even if he is innocent, even if he is as innocent, and this is the position that nobody's fault but mine. Nobody's fault but mine. He, he's the only one that can, he, he got to blame himself for this. Even if he is innocent, having these private conversations with these young teens. No. No, oh, I don't care if it's a person of the same gender. No, 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 no. Look, man, if it's if it's Beth Phoenix talking to a 15 year old girl, that's an aspiring, you know, I don't know what it is about ladies, but there is just that that sisterhood, that brotherhood and and all that other shit. Like. You ain't got to worry about that, typically, but. Even if you're a dude and you're talking to another, like, no, no, you just got to, no, no. And if you are going to give some type of advice, man, the hell with text messages and all that other shit, you're pretty much doing it out there in the open on social media for the entire world to see. I can't tell you how many times over the years I have had a person that has tried to hit me up on social media. And they have tried to say something along the lines of, hey, uh, I got a question I need to ask you. And I come right back to them and I say, go ahead, ask your question. Well, I wanted to ask this question to you uh, in private. I, I wanted to know if I could uh, uh, DM you or get your email address. No, no, whatever you got to say, go ahead and say it out here in the open. Really, you know, I, I don't really believe in private messages and, and all of that, you know, private messages, private emails and all that. That's, that's really for, you know, business purposes and, you know, close friends, family, uh, that's it. So what's your question? And it turns out whatever that question was that they had, I was justified, you know, it was like, there was no reason for them to ask for all of that personal information and, and all that other shit. And if it was a case where that person had refused and they insisted on trying to get me to open up my DMs or all this other shit, I just fucking, I muted them so I didn't have to see them again. And that pretty much was the end of it. That's, that's how I operate. 
Anybody that has some, you know, put it out in the open. Put it out in the open, put it out in the open, put it out in the open. Yes, there is a such thing as, hey, I'm just trying to be helpful. I'm just trying to, th there is such a thing as that. I, I get that. But there, yes, there are some people that have different motives when it comes to social media. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. But his first mistake, if he is innocent, he shouldn't have been conducting himself in this type of uh in this type of fashion. I I just don't know if he's really innocent, guys. I don't. And it's not for me to decide whether or not he's innocent. It's not for me to decide if he's guilty. There are some things that are not matching up, though. For example, for the people that were supposedly victims, if this really did happen to them, the Joshua guy and what he claimed, all these people, let's just put them all in a nice little pot. Just, just put them all in a nice little pot and let's be real for a second. If these people really did feel that they were violated in some type of way by Patrick Clark, then why didn't any of these people that, that claimed they were working with the police and all this other shit, why have these people not submitted all of their information, given it to the police? Okay, you're young. You know, you're, you're, you're under 18. Okay, your guardians are acting on your behalf and they are submitting all of this evidence on your behalf and they're trying to get charges to be filed on Patrick Clark. We have not seen one parent, one guardian of any of these victims come forward and say, hey, yeah, I can confirm, you know, everything that I'm reading here, everything. Yeah, this motherfucker is guilty. We're working with the police. I'm trying to see if we can get charges on them, trying to see if we can get some type of an investigation put on them, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, so the fact that nobody, all this time that's passed, and not one goddamn guardian, not one goddamn parent has stepped up to the plate to corroborate what their kid has put out there about Patrick Clark. You all should find that to be a little bit alarming. You all should. If you don't, now you should. Okay? How do you explain... Now, remember what I was talking about earlier about remember the voice messages. Remember the voice messages. Well, this is what I don't understand in regards to these voice messages. Um, these voice messages, doesn't he have some type of, Patrick Clark that is, doesn't he have some type of a record still uh, of, of these voice messages? I mean, to each its own. I have an archive of every single email corresponds, uh, you, you name it. Because I just don't know when I'm going to need to access that. You know, it could be a case where it could be a case where I've I had a I'll, I'll give you a most recent example. I'll give you a most recent example. I remember some years back when I interviewed Black Lightning star Chris Williams and I reached out to his people, get the show set up and all that, see if he'd be willing to make an appearance on the show. Correspondence like that. You know, I, I keep that information handy because, oh, hey, look at this project. Cress is now working on. Hey, I want to get him on the show. I want him to talk about that. That's a good example. Or, oh, man, I remember when I did that voiceover work for blah, blah, blah company. Oh, man, it would be so badass if I could work with them again on another project. Let me hit them up and let me see if they're working on anything else right now where they could... You understand what I'm saying? So there's actually some of us that operate like that, where we try to keep like all our correspondence. And for me, I, I got it all nice and organized and shit. So, you know, I hear this thing about voice messages and, and how he wanted to prove that, you know, he was in fact Velveteen Dream and he really did, you know, ask this person their height and their 
school they went to, you know, la 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 la. All right, well, where's the voice ads in regards to this? Where are they? Did you delete them? Did you, you know, what what happened? After you were done speaking with this person, you just deleted your phone. So I kind of find that to be a, a little bit murky. I, I kind of find that to be a little bit alarming or whatever. You know, here's the thing. It's a double-edged sword for this guy either way, because even if he is telling the truth, even if he is telling the truth and nothing bad went down, nothing bad did went down, his intent was true. Once you have something like that out in the open, it is very, very, very hard to get your reputation back. It is very hard to, okay, business as usual. There are, He's going to find that there are going to be a, a lot of doors that's going to be closing in his face for the immediate future. And he's going to have to do some serious fucking grinding. Some serious fucking grinding. Let's be real. You think AEW wants... No. 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 You think ROH? No. You think Billy Corgan, NWA? No. You think Impact Wrestling? No. If I were to even put long shots out there, if I were to even put long shots out there, maybe Impact would bite. Maybe Impact, because they're desperate for that attention and all that. But, like, that is such a hot topic right now. You know, it almost reminds me to a degree of the NFL combine. For those of you that maybe don't follow the NFL, when everything leads up to the NFL draft and all that, you got all these guys, they do all these combines, they do all these media interviews and all this other shit. And it's basically an opportunity for these, these NFL clubs to assess, okay, well, what do we think about this guy? What, what, what do we think about this Heisman Trophy winner? You know, you know, they talk about him being the number one overall draft pick and, you know, we got the number one pick and all that. You know, what what do you think? What do you think about this guy from uh from an interview standpoint, from a personality standpoint, any conflict, anything that you're seeing in him that would maybe, yeah, you know what, we shouldn't select him with our draft pick. Should we maybe go in another direction? And they get these grade levels for how they're able to conduct themselves and all of that, right? It's already a freak sideshow as it is when it comes to these physical workout combines and all that. But when you're talking about the media, you know, the media joints and, and then when they're talking to some of these these owners and, and all that other shit, I, I still remember the one joint and I think it had to do with it had to do with um oh shit. The quarterback's name will come to me in a hot second, but I remember the owner had said to him, and this was a black quarterback, do you have any tattoos? Uh, do you have any of this? Oh, and he's like, oh, you don't? Okay, good. Keep it just like that, right? So you, you kind of just got to look at uh, a lot of those, a lot of those fuck Russell Wilson, I, I think it was Russell Wilson, and he was asked by the fucking uh, owners of the fucking Seahawks, you got any tattoos? You you got any multiple piercings? You got any of this? You know, you got any of that? So he's gonna have to grind seriously to if it's legit. He's gonna have to do some serious grinding and and all that other shit to redeem himself, his you know his name, his legacy, uh, all of that 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 whole nine yards. I don't have the answer for you guys. I, I, I don't. You know, there is no right and wrong answer uh, right here. But if you're asking me just straight up, Lee, just based on everything that you've gathered about Velveteen Dream, you know, what's what's your position here on, on this one? Do you believe him? Is he innocent? First time in a, in a good while. Wow, I'm stumped. I, I don't know the answer uh, to that. Uh, I can tell you this, I can tell you this, our society, and this goes back to everything that I have talked about on this show all year long, year after year after year, which is the social toxicity 
that is going on with these social media platforms. It is very easy for somebody to feel as though they are connected to an individual, whether it's because, oh, well, when they do their podcast, you know, I'm right there with them or man, I follow them on social media and, you know, you got so many people that are looking at these social media platforms and the way in which they're able to connect with their favorite personalities. They feel as though they're even more connected to them. They feel this sense of entitlement when it comes to their favorite celebrities, athletes, you feel me? And Heaven forbid you have a situation where, acknowledge me. Why won't you acknowledge me? And that person is not being acknowledged. Those can be the most spiteful fans. Those can be the most spiteful followers. Those can, Lord knows, I've had my experience over the years where people who legit felt I did not acknowledge them enough, they would act very spiteful kind of vengeful and downright fucking disturbing um, to a certain degree. So that trend is out there. But the other thing incorporated with this whole social toxicity that's going on with, with these platforms is once you get that one person that doesn't like you, I mean, all of a sudden that just pretty much opens up the Pandora's box and there's no telling what could be had on social media, you know, what, what that person is willing to do on social media. So although I see the great benefits of social media, I've, I've also seen that it can be a, a very dangerous tool at the same time, where in this day and age, we've got so many individuals that are on these social platforms that are reactionary to a lot of the news that they see. You see it with your own two eyes. Think about it for a second. You see it with your own two eyes. You see video footage of a police officer that is arresting a person of color. And the way that they're taking them down on the ground, it may call for people to say foul. Why is that brother being done like that? What the fuck is going on? Fuck the police. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, but when the full video... Uh, when the full body cam footage is released, you see that this individual spat at the police officers, ran away from the police officers. When they were apprehended, they were swinging at police officers. They pulled out a weapon on the police officers. And, and you know, those same people that were so quick to go racism and all this other shit. Now that you've got the full picture from the moment the officers accepted the call to when they drove to the scene, you see everything that's going on. Those same people that were so quick to, this is an injustice. Those same people are nowhere to be found on social media apologizing for jumping the gun. And that has been the biggest fucking problem with social media in 2021 and will continue to be in years to come is that our society is so reactionary this society as a whole does not know how to say okay i see this but let's back up let's get the entire picture let's wait for all the evidence to play itself out we we, we need to see w w nothing but the facts please just give us the facts give us nothing but the concrete evidence let us connect the dots I always bring him up from time to time. Look at what happened with Chris Hardwick of Talking Dead and all that and, and The Wall, NBC's The Wall. The greatest example of how the lynch mob of social media pretty much came after him and then afterwards, you know, what, you know once you had all these people that were just stepping up, all these ex-girlfriends, parents of these ex-girlfriends that were stepping up, defending Chris Hardwick and everything and and all these internal investigations that were being done by all of these networks and they pretty much at the end weren't able to come up with anything. You know, look at how all of that just eventually and, and how people just went on to the next thing. 
I'll give you another example. Broke my heart to see. Look at the shit with Paul Mooney. Look at the shit with Paul Mooney. Sure, you saw tributes that were coming in for Paul Mooney left and right. You feel me? But home in on this. Home in on this. You had those allegations from years back that apparently Paul Mooney did some shit to one of Richard Pryor's kids. This is something that Mooney, these allegations, he's denied over and over and over again. And yet the prior kid claimed, no, you know, it, it, it did happen. So you got this hearsay that's in the air here. Now, we as a society, once again, very reactionary. And, you know, I remember there was one comment. I remember there was one comment that I had saw on the Facebook page where a person had said some unflattering things about Paul Mooney. I went in, I, I removed that comment. I, I have blocked that person. You know, I, I blocked them because, okay, everything that this person was putting out there, you know, sadly, speculatory. It's speculatory. You can't really, you know, where is a definitive, right? Facts want nothing but the facts. What you are talking about is hearsay. You're talking about rumors. You're talking about the only thing you can say to yourself in a situation like that. Well, you know what? If Mr. Mooney really did do what he did to Richard Pryor's kid, if there's a fucking hell, that son of a bitch is going to be right there and he's going to get what's coming to him. That's what you, you know. Well, what if, what if that allegation, what if that's not true? What if it isn't true? Then what? Then what? That's the real question. Then what? That's why I'm at a point when it comes to social media. I don't interact with social media um, as I used to, especially ever since I had saw the uh, Netflix movie, The Social Dilemma. Don't look at the one that's on YouTube. That's a completely different it's one on specifically on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. I recommend anybody watch that ever since I had watched the social dilemma and learned a lot more about social media, the platforming and everything, it's just, it's changed my outlook on social media. You know, now I I just look at social media as, all right, it's a good, it's a good vice to have for connecting my audience with the shows. And yeah, you know, when I'm live, I can interact with them. You know, we can have our little, you know, meet and greet and all that. Answer some questions and all. Um, Hey, I'm watching this TV show and we're all watching this same TV show in real time. And maybe I'll put a comment or whatever out. But, you know, if you kind of notice nowadays on my social media, I'm not as as engaging um, as I used to. And and that's by design. Now at this point, it's just pretty much, well, anything I have to say, I'm just going to say it on the shows. I'm not going to, Lord, no social media cuts you off anyway. They only give you, but so many fucking characters, right? And everybody wants to be a fucking expert on what's right, what's wrong, all that fucking bullshit. You feel where I'm coming from? So yeah, it, it, but it's definitely changed the way I, I go about on social media, a lot more of my friends, not for nothing, a lot more of my friends, especially those in the podcasting world, they've kind of scaled back on social media uh, a, a bit as well because they see the toxicity of it. I mean, you know, when you really just kind of take a step back and you think about everything that Marvin Allo was talking about, he's absolutely dead fucking on point. He is dead fucking on point about social media. I don't blame the dude whatsoever for not having anything to do with social media anymore. He is absolutely fucking right and god bless him because him disconnecting from social media was probably the best thing mentally uh that he was able to do for himself you think about it you know there's like stupid little petty arguments over the least littlest fucking thing you know you can't even you can't even put a very respectful 
very well balanced, thought out there when it comes to politics without being attacked. It's the simplest thing. A lot of toxicity. So, my message to all athletes, celebrities, uh, entertainers, that includes you wrestlers as well, my advice to you guys with regards to this Patrick Clark Velveteen Dream situation, assuming what he said is true, there's a lot you can learn from this. Rule number one, I don't care if it's a person of the same gender. Don't be doing private DMs with an uh, a, a individual under the age of 18. Just don't. It's not worth it. Just don't do it. Do not do it. Even if you mean no harm, you just love interacting with your fan base. Okay, there's nothing wrong with interacting with your fan base. Do it out in the open where everybody can fucking see it. And if that fan wants even more fucking personal attention from you, you direct them to buying your fucking cameo. It's as simple as that. Tell them to buy your fucking cameo. Or, hey, you're going to be at blah, 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 blah. You want to do a meet and greet, you can meet me over there, right? That's how you fucking do it. The second thing, I don't want to hear no fucking wrestler say to me, well, I shouldn't have to delete my vagina and asshole pics. I don't want to hear a wrestler saying to me, well, I shouldn't have to delete my fingers up my asshole and, and my dick and balls pic because, you know, it's like, Please don't, don't, don't hit me with that logic right now. Please don't. Please, I beg of you, please don't. If a gas company can get fucking hacked and get held up for ransom for boatloads of money, $5 million to be exact, and they did get their money, you got to be thinking from the standpoint of, unless you are a fucking tech whiz, you need to be thinking from the standpoint of, you know what, at any time, any of these apps that I'm using, they could be compromised. I could be hacked. This could happen. What type of information would I want to be circulating out there on the dark web? I love you guys. Look, look, I got a nice big dick. Okay. I admire my big dick. When I fucking go to the toilet and I, I got to do number one, I, I look at my dick sometimes and I just go, God damn, you're blessed. That doesn't mean I got to fucking take a fucking picture of my dick every single goddamn day. And I got to have it on my phone just for the fuckity fuck fuck of it. Just because. That's not what that means. Okay? I'm like this. Men, women, transgendered. You want to show your goodies, right? If you're going to do this, if, if you want to just have a nice little archive joint, I've been saying this for years. If you want to have a nice little archive of your little intimate parts, it's very simple. Create a Yahoo account or a Gmail account. Make that password encrypted. Make that shit bulletproof. All your little dick pics, your titty pics, all of that. Don't spam out. Just put a couple of them right there, right? Then when you need to access it, number one, it's not on your phone. It's not on your tablet. It's not on your Xbox. It's not on your PlayStation 5 or wherever the fuck else little electronic device. It's safe in an email, bulletproof encrypted. Which brings me to another point. Your encryptions, make sure your, your encryptions are fucking on point. Don't be fucking going, I love hot dogs, for a password. That's not good enough. Go in with capital what, lowercase, put your numbers in there, put some symbols in there. You're good to go. Simple as that. trying to figure out if there's any other advice I can fucking give. 
be leery about where you're posting pictures of yourself uh, on social media, especially when it comes to these dating apps, uh, to these dating websites. You just got to be careful because now we're in the day and age. I'll leave you with this. I saw this interesting report about two weeks ago right here in the metropolitan area where uh, there were about four to five women that were being scammed by this guy who they thought was in the military. And it turns out this guy that all these women were interacting with, you know, it was a really nice picture of this guy. Nice, good, tall, you know, white guy, well built, looked as though he was maybe in his mid to late fifties. We talk about how he did all these tours and he was in Iraq and all this other shit. And it turns out the people that they were interacting with, it wasn't the guy behind the picture. It, it was some other motherfucker. And this guy had scammed some of these women. Oof. I mean, this guy almost had about, I think, a, a quarter to half a million dollars he was able to get off of some of these women. One of the women, they had became really, really suspicious. And I think they might have got in contact with the local news and said, hey, look, I think I'm being scammed. This is what's going on. And this pic that had been in circulation of this guy, he actually did use it on a dating site many years ago. And when he pretty much was done, he you know, found his partner or whatever. You know, he was like, OK, well, you know, I I'm done. But he didn't. I think he deactivated his account. But somehow that's how the dark web works. You got motherfuckers that will take your picture. I recently saw Allison K become a victim of this. Somebody had took a picture of Allison K. Y'all know about Allison K. Somebody had took her picture and they put it up on Tinder. And Allison K had to jump out there and say, guys, girls, no, I'm not on Tinder. I'm not on any dating apps. You know, if I was one, I wouldn't let you guys know about it. You know, and, and two, I would never post a, a face picture of myself on any of those sites no you know because it's kind of like one of those i want people to pretty much know me for me not because oh you're that wrestler right but yeah you you got pick collectors and and all kinds of shit that's going on so my my final piece of advice would be when it comes to these dating apps whatever your choice is tender grinder uh slender bender whatever the fuck y'all be using be mindful of the pics that you're using of yourself on these sites and and have in the back of your mind that somebody could be frequenting those sites and they could be a pick collector and they could be doing some shit with them on the dark web you do all of those things you should be okay simple as that simple as that hopefully that helps now, programming notes. All right, so Tuesday, we're coming right back. Uh, we're going to be doing a super show for you guys. Remember, we're going to be talking NWA Power, and we're going to be talking NXT Fallout. We'll also go over the NXT ratings breakdown from the last show that they did a week ago. We'll talk about that as well. Um, oh yeah, by then we'll know about AEW Dark results. So we'll definitely go over the AEW Dark results as well. And then remember after Tuesday night, the next show and that Tuesday night show, remember we're going to be coming on at 10:30 PM Eastern again, 10:30 PM Eastern. We should be done by midnight. So it, it sh or sooner. So it should be a pretty fun show. Come hang out if you're going to be around later on in the week. Remember, AEW Dynamite is going to Friday night this week only. They're going to be coming on at 10 p.m. Eastern, and they're going to go until midnight. So midnight, beginning of Saturday, I will be right here. We're going to cover Dynamite Fallout. We're going to go over the card for Double or Nothing. I'll offer some Double or Nothing predictions. Tune in for that. That should be a good show. Uh, yes, there will be a double or nothing post show that weekend. Yes, there will be that. So everything pretty much is going to set up 
the season finale of the RCWR show, uh, which is going to be on Tuesday. No, which is going to be on Monday, May the 31st. That's pretty much going to be the final one. But remember, I'm putting a poll out for you guys this Wednesday to see if you all would like a NWA pay-per-view post show that weekend that I'll be doing my wedding and honeymoon. So honestly, make sure you're voting on that one when you see it. I'll tally up the results. We'll say that'll pretty much, that poll will remain open until, uh, let's say that poll will, all right, it's going to go live Wednesday. I tell you what, let's give you guys a whole week. So that poll will go live on the 26th of May. And you'll be able to vote pretty much until, You'll pretty much be able to vote until Wednesday, June 2nd, let's say let's say 5 p.m. Eastern, all right? That's how we'll fucking do it. Uh, meanwhile, be kind, rewind, check out previous episodes you might have missed on demand and on the downloads. Um, I'm most curious what you guys have to say about the Velveteen Dream situation, just everything that I said during this episode, agree, disagree. You got a point that uh, you want to bring to the table, maybe that wasn't discussed. So let me know. And to help people out more, I will just have the Velveteen Dream piece alone be available uh, on YouTube. I'll make a clip out of that so that you guys will be able to access it uh, a lot easier. Okay. Uh, get at me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Use the keywords, the RCWR show. I will have this episode be available for uh, on-demand and downloads at this point uh, Tuesday night uh, for you guys. It will definitely be on your favorite platform right before we go live at uh, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. All right. Till next go around, wishing all y'all to be safe and most importantly, be kind to uh, one another. Those of you that had checked out the show live, appreciate the love and the support as always. And uh, one more time, if you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. You know, you know, you know, you know what to do. It's, it's, uh, it's right. Yeah, it just disappeared. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. All right, guys, much love. I'll check you all out in a little bit. Y'all take care.